Hey guys, James here from TCG University. Come back at you with another deck profile. This week for the campus championship, we did Princess P versus the world. Um, so a lot of us just pick characters. Uh, I tried to stick away from trying to hard counter, hard counter characters and build a deck completely around countering Princess and the P. Uh, uh, Jeffrey is the character I chose for this week's campus championship. Um, the reason I chose him was not only because like his flash makes him very good against Princess and the P if he's going second, or if, as long as his character's ready, but it also gave him the card pool, which I think is the strongest against the P, Princess and the P deck, which is Order, and then I think second after that, in my opinion, is Earth, so he also has Earth, which is very good, but um, I felt like those two, that symbol alone was very strong enough to face against Princess and the P. Uh, so uh, make sure to check out the other deck profiles on the list. Check out the camp championship and really see how uh, Princess of the P performed versus all these other decks. Um, these decks are all very, really cool in my opinion. Um, and then uh, let's get into it. Okay, guys. Joffrey 1 Dot is a 6 hand size 26 Vitality character with Earth, Order, Water. Like I said during the, during the, uh, the beginning, we're playing our deck under Order today. He has two abilities. R, once per turn, after an attack is played, it gets Flash. Uh, you, if you have no cards in your hand, you can reduce the damage to zero. First form, commit one card in your opponent's staging area with a printed difficulty of X or less. X equals the number of characters in your staging area. Um, we're uh, mainly playing this for the counter to P, which is once per turn, give something flash, which means they have to have two attacks in their hand to truly go in if our character's ready. And then if we do end up going to late game, um, we still have that ability as well as if they build anything, we get to commit that down. Um, this deck, in my opinion, can still work versus other characters, so it, it works functionally. We have four Joffrey One Dots. I'll move these off to the side, put you right here. Sure, right there. Uh, then we have four Joffrey Two Dots. Joffrey Two Dots says, um, after a character respond after a character is added to your staging area, you freeze one of your opponent's committed foundations, and then E once per turn, your turn, your opponent commits one foundation for each character in your staging area. Uh, this is very good versus other characters where they were outside princes in the P, like for the campus championship. They build foundations. The main idea is stun your opponent out, freeze some of their foundations, make it to where they don't really have a backswing on you when you go in. Uh, to complement our characters. Since we don't regularly add as easily as some other characters, we're playing for a moment of rest. Uh, need to go this way? Yeah. Uh, for a moment of rest. Uh, seventh cross response. After you play a character that you could normally attach to your character, you add to your staging area. So after you block with your zero mid blocks, you add them to your staging area, and you have your characters. The other ability is enhanced flip. This attack gets gauge X. X equals the printed damage of uh, the attack. So... If you have your normal attack, I'll give it gauge four. So now this has gauge four and gauge three, which is very, very good. Just having extra gauge on attacks when you know they're probably going to go through is very strong. Uh, let's put you here so we can talk about you if we need you. I'll put you both right here. Okay. Uh, we're playing one Albion. Sometimes you just need to get that get back that block. And sometimes just picking up another mid block is very helpful. As well as giving an attack gauge 3 if we ever need to push more uh, characters onto our staging area. Uh, like I said, we're playing an all gauge deck. So to complement our gauges, we're playing 4 Bear of the Makai Whistle. Uh, it's a 0 6 that just says flip your attack is negative 2 to its gauge rating. And you drop a character from your deck to your discard pile. Meaning you just don't draw that character later. As well as you make sure if your attack. If your attack gets partial blocked, it's most likely going to still get you a character. So they have to full block your attack. Uh, now we'll get into the attacks. We're playing three Golden Arrow. Uh, Golden Arrow is a gauge four, three high for four attack. You flip one other card in your card pool, and then it gets plus X speed equal to the control of the flip card. Uh, most of the time, what you could do is, like, say you, have, you drew a Makai Whistle and go Makai Whistle. I'll play this on a five. Cool. I'll flip this. This has control of six. This attack's going to get six speed. So this is now a 9 high for 4. And then you have gauge 4. If you have your other things, you can give it gauge. And you just confirm that you're going to get your characters. Uh, next we have 2 Thundering Torture. Or Lightning Torture. Uh, it's a 2 mid for 4 with gauge 4. And a th and it's a throw. If you have at least 2 characters in your staging area or discard pile, this attack is plus 3 damage. So if at any point you've dropped a character or checked a character, this gets 3 damage and it's going to confirm basically get that gauge 4 off. 
because of the extra three damage, meaning you're going to get your character. Uh, then we have two lightning shot. This complements our character style very well in the sense that it gets stun X equal to the number of characters in our staging area, which min maximum of three for it. But stun three, you have Joffrey, two dots. Once per turn, your opponent commits one foundation for each character. So like maximum three. So three, six. You get the ability of your first form to commit an X card. So that's seven. And then you freeze those foundations every time you add a character. So after stunning their entire board, you can you freeze their entire board and they just don't have a turn the next turn after. Uh, we have two Ashen Claws. Knight zero high block. Gauge four. Freezes a foundation. Complements our play style very, very well. Uh, we're playing one Storm Tournament. A uh, Storm Tournament is a discard momentum stat attach a character from our deck. Um, it's also, if we have two more characters, discard itself afterwards. It's safe, has gauge four. It's a five mid for five. It At least, bare minimum, your opponent's going to commit one or two just to block this, which is really good for us. Unless they have a really good block, but I mean, who cares? Uh, then we're playing Fort Dust to Dust. Um, one of the best things, we're complementing his freeze tactic by making our opponents want to freeze their attacks by choice. We're going to force them to choose to do it because no one's going to let you get Dust to Dust off. Dust to Dust is a 6-3 no block. with a, That's a 4 mid for 5 with gauge 5. That says if you have at least two characters in your staging area, it ignores progressive difficulty. And then the ability on it is E, search your deck for a gauge attack and add it to your hand. Your opponent can commit and freeze one of their foundations to cancel this ability. Uh, this just forces your opponent to... Uh, for freeze and commit because they don't want you to get that character I mean get that attack because it's just another attack and then if for whatever reason your opponent's committed out and they can't you can just go dust for dust dust for dust dust for dust dust for dust and just keep playing cool cards uh, then the really cool part about the deck is we're trying to get all our characters out as fast as possible so we're playing three prism storm of torment uh, this is the seven high for seven that says it passes automatically if it's the seventh card you have attempted to play during the turn and then it gets seven speed as well has a nice one low block. Checks a three, so you don't have to worry about checking bad. And then its ability is add all characters that share a name with your starting character to from your discard pile to your staging area. So the more car more characters we need to get into our discard pile, the better, because it just allows us to storm a torment out and then dump them in, freeze their foundations, and then start slinging cool attacks. Uh, then we're gonna get into more of like how do we play seven cards in a turn as a six hander. Uh, on top of Dust for Dust, we have Punch and Judy. Uh, punch is a punch. We'll start with punch, I guess. It's a two six one high block that says this attack gets plus three or minus three damage. Add a copy of Judy, and then we have Judy, uh, two six one low block, plus three or minus three speed. Add a big shot punch, and they just kind of cycle each other to the point where, oh, did I play six? I'll stop playing in the end seven. I'll play this for free. Comes in, do a cool thing. It's really good. Uh, we're playing two passing the torch. Uh, you can commit and draw one card, and then if you have no cards, then draw two. Uh, this works really well with our Joffrey one dot ability. I put him on top so that way, if you can read him, you can. Uh, but basically, your once per turn says if you have no hand cards in hand, you reduce the damage of the flash attack to zero. And this says uh, later that if you have no cards in hand, you draw two. So you play, your, you leave one card in hand, you block it, you flash the next attack, and then if they play a third one, you draw two and defend yourself. Uh, to get more cards in hand, we're playing four Never a Day Without Training. Uh, discard one, draw one. If we do have the Albion on board, it's just a draw one. Uh, kind of just keep our hand size up or just keep flushing our hand to try and get cards we need. Uh, same thing behind Voice of Reason. Uh, both players discard draw, discard and draw. Just making sure that we uh, kind of funnel our hand into stuff we want. Uh, then we have one God of Thunder. Uh, destroy foundation, ready foundation. Solid, just we play some high difficulty, so making sure we can keep foundations ready is very good for us. Uh, two pursuing a vendetta to defend our foundations. Uh, it's a R flip after a foundation leaves your staging area. You add a foundation committed. Uh, so just after one foundation leaves, you bring another one in. It also protects itself from being from leaving, which also just helps keep our foundation count up against certain decks. Uh, now we're getting to the more defensive part of the deck. Uh, because of how many characters we play, I really like the idea of playing Give Me Your Best Shot. Uh, it has two abilities. Uh, we won't really use the bottom one because we don't care about it too much. We're mainly playing for the first E, which is E, reduce this attack speed to zero. The next card you play this turn gets Breaker 2. Uh, this just means if we have a character in hand, we can drop their speed to zero, block with a character, Breaker 2, and then say we have the uh, we have this on board. We can then add it to our staging area. So we get to Breaker 2, then add it in, which is just nuts. Uh, we're playing one Rescue Mission. 
you can change an attack zone to mid and then reduce the speed to one. Sort of the same idea, except we, if we need to, we can use this to change our attack to, uh, to give our attack plus two speed. But if it's our opponent's attack, it goes to one speed and then just makes our blocking on a mid really easy with Joffrey. Uh, we have refusing to let go. Uh, you return this attack to its print damage. Uh, if it's you return the attack to print damage, and then give it plus two or minus two damage. Uh, this just says if our opponent super buffs an attack, we just return it to normal and give it minus two, and hopefully it just doesn't continue to hit us hard. Uh, we play a bunch of sixes, so we're playing one mushroom experimentation. Uh, commit your character. Both uh, both players discard two, draw two as a, an ability, and then E destroy. Discard one card with a print control of six. Our characters. Uh, and then you reduce this attack's damage to one. Uh, this just means that any attack that gets super buffed just gets dropped all the way to one, and then we don't have to we don't have to mess with it or worry about it. Uh, same thing with the Edge of the Death. Uh, these were all really good counters. I feel like nobody's playing like in general versus like very strong decks like Shotgun, Missile Launcher, uh, Nutcracker, and stuff like that. That could seriously be played and no one just doesn't uh this one's a three five that says it can't be frozen or sealed by our opponent's card effects uh during our attack if our opponents at desperation would commit this to commit one of their foundations and then e remove if this tax damage is eight or greater we can reduce the damage to two meaning if our opponent super pumps something we just go drop it to two it's a very very solid counter in my opinion uh we have two bebop blues if our opponent plays an ability for the second, third time or grave during a turn, we commit their character. It uh, just stops overuse of characters or other abilities, which is very good. We have one mutual respect. Uh, we discard momentum, and then both players can only play one more enhanced during the enhanced step. Uh, super solid card. It's almost a pseudo flash and complements Jeffrey's flash very well. Uh, then we have two retreat Arctica. Uh, we destroy this, and then before the damage step, if an attack had three or more keywords, we reduce its damage to zero, meaning we just don't have to deal with it. They can play as many enhances as they want. We're only taking zero as long as it has the three or more keywords, which is very good for us. Uh, we have one for Mother Russia. Uh, if our opponent adds a card, we force, if our opponent draws or adds a card to their hand, we force them to add one to their card pool. And then E destroy, we return this attack to its printed speed, and then it, this ability is playable while committed. Uh, then next we're going to talk about um, speed hate, weird speed hate. We got a cool info we have two cool and focused. Uh, when we attempt to block with this card, we return the attack to its print zone and speed, meaning we just block for free. The other ability is mill one card, which works sort of with a couple of the abilities like Punch and Judy and our seventh prism, which is very good. And then we have two nightmare tears. Uh, when we attempt to block, we reduce the speed of the attack to zero. Has a three low block, meaning we basically block on like a three or higher. Um, and then your turn flip your opponent commits one of their foundations and freezes it which complements Jeffrey very well as well uh, then The last card we're playing because we do want to block because of the style of how we play we're playing four Fefe. Uh Flip minus three speed just protect us from our opponent just playing too many good things uh, And then we're getting into more of j it was in our main deck just for the uh, princess and the P hate it doesn't have any other purpose and isn't as uh, universal uh, This card is a little more universal, but I feel I played this in the side in a lot of my decks Like I played this in the side worlds recently and uh, I actually cited it in a couple times because it's useful um, This one's very useful versus decks that like to super pump things or continuously pump and have to do things in a certain order We have my resolve will never falter E remove this tech is minus one damage and may not receive damage bonuses for us of the enhanced step and then remove, if your attack deals uh, less than printed damage, you commit two of your opponent's foundations. Uh, it's just a solid one drop that just says your opponent can't super buff their attacks, which is very useful versus things like Missile Launcher, Nutcracker, versus things like uh, Shotgun, stuff like that, where people are going to start trying to spear bomb their attacks, and we just don't want them to do that. And the last card, which is one of my favorite cards to play in a side deck if I ever get a chance, and I have the room, which is Burning Blitz Vortex. It's a 5-2, five, 5 mid for 5 with powerful 5. Respond card pool, commit your character. After your opponent plays their second enhance, this enhance step, commit their character. Uh, it's basically like a Bebop Blues, but you have to block with it first, which for us is very easy because Joffrey can go, I'll flash it. Cool. I'll block. Don't play any more enhances or I'm going to commit your character and just deal with it that way. Thanks again for watching the profile, guys. That was my Joffrey deck. If you liked it, make sure to leave a comment down below. 
Uh, make sure to, uh, if you want to support us, go to patreon.com slash TCG University. If you hit us up at the $1 level, you get access to most of our content early, most of our content live. You get access to uh, our Discord. We can talk with us, talk with the Magic guys, the Final Fantasy guys, talk with the White Schwartz guys. Uh, make sure to check out the other uh, decks in the playlist as well as the matches. They're very fun to watch uh, and very fun to play, in my opinion. I Some of them weren't as fun, but some of them were very fun to look at and watch and play. So uh, make sure to check those out. As always, guys, stay learned.